facilitator for the workshop. My name is Marie Kubo, and the moderator is Devin Goto. He will, he will be um, trying to make sure all questions will be answered. A few housekeeping things before we start. Please mute your mics to avoid background noise and feedback. Please use the chat box if you have any questions um, or if you want to leave comments. Please do not share your screen or stop recording. It will be recorded. And if you happen to log off, no worries. Just log back in and you'll join us. Finally, mahalo for showing us the grace today for any technology issues. Um, I would like to welcome Kalani Hiapo. He will be presenting on Ho'o Ulu Ike. Oh, cute. Aloha Kako. Hopefully you guys are having a magical, um, magical day today on this wonderful Friday. I'm going to start presenting my screen. Marie, you can hear me, yeah? Okay. All right. So let's start off with Ho'oluke, engaging learning and enlightenment. So today we are actually going to, I'm going to share you what the program is about, what we did, um, and the assessments the kids did, our projects that we did, as well as I have an activity for you. Mm -hmm. You're not just going to sit down and watch. We're all going to participate together. Okay, so let's talk about the mission. Mission of Ho'olu Ike. The mission of Ho'olu Ike is to help students achieve their greatest potential as artists, leaders, and global citizens by rooting contemporary practice and academia in Hawaiian ancestral knowledge of songs, dance, and chants. Now to backtrack a little bit, how this program actually started, um, I've always actually wanted to open up my own program. I just didn't know it was gonna happen so soon. Um, just being in the time of everything transitioning with my previous job. And um, I decided to just jump in there because a lot of things were getting canceled because of um, the pandemic, right? And I was like, naturally, as educators, as we do think, what are kids going to do? What are they doing during this time? Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to jump into this double dutch of education and media and online learning. And I have no experience in it, and let's go, let's do it. And so um, I created this program in about, I think, a month, a little under a month, um, because, I, you know, you have to try to push everything out early enough for people to enroll. So it was quite exciting and a little bit overwhelming at the same time. Um, so our program overview for this summer is what we did. This past summer, um, Ho'olike was a one-week um, live streaming interactive program. And I, th I think my, my biggest focus was having the live stream interactive program. So it wasn't just playing a video, I mean, watching a video and then, you know, showing your learnings from the video. It was really interactive because it holds us accountability um, for both parties, right? As a Kumu and as a student. Um, it was four hours in a day. It was four hours a day. And it provides students with project and AINA-based learning experiences that drew connections between Hawaiian culture and STEAM. I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan about STEAM. And it's all because of the A in STEAM. Because I love the arts and hula and, and mele on all, that kind of, on all, that, all those things. And I think those are really essential to have with all of these um, um, supports of academia. And we'll get into a lot of this more. Okay, so lessons, activities, and projects will focus on mele, hula, mo'olelo, malama aina, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math to the eyes of our kupuna. So here are the learning objectives, objectives sorry, that we have for our program. They were able to engage in, in live interactive and um, creative lessons. They explored Hawaiian identity and resilience, develop STEAM skills, demonstrate positive peer interaction, and improve 21st century communication skills. Because I know we have a lot of students who are going on the computer, even prior to this COVID, um, they were doing projects and PowerPoints, but sometimes I, I feel that it goes a little bit too fast to where the kids are like 
still doing chicken fingers on a computer. So um, we, I, I felt like I kind of wanted to incorporate some of those basic things into um, our program, whether it's typing or even just showing how to present something. Um, so with all this, we had a driving question. And our driving question was, how can my knowledge of planting and management of natural resources help provide sustainability to my ohana and community? So with this question, students were just, they were, it was nothing intense, but they, I just gave them the question and all they had to do was just write a paper about it. And uh, the only requirement, well, there's two requirements to assure that they answer the questions to the best of their, their ability and provide pictures. And uh, I feel like pictures are important because I even, again, it goes back to the basic of improving your 21 century skills. They could write something out, but do they know how to manipulate pictures within Word is another level, right? Um, and providing that background for them. So, and I don't know if you're wondering, but if you're wondering how, like, where did this curriculum come from? Where did everything come from? Um, it comes from our melee. So the, 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 the beauty about our program is I find a melee and we literally go from there. Um, so I use the line, Ho'ola i Ho'onua, the earth lives, which is in a song, um, Kea Nue Nue. And um, as you can see there to the left is the original, re the writings of Mary Kavanapukui and Mary Lam. And it's, it's a beautiful song. It's very, very, um, it's very children appropriate and it's more done for like the keiki. So from preschool to third grade, but the, ma but the mana'o nui behind it is so great because um, it really talks about the water cycle, right? And then so everything that provides in this mele is provided for us from our kupuna that we can use in our curriculum. And how I did that was took each verse and made it into the lesson for the day or topics. So here's one of them. Um, this is the first line. If you guys haven't heard this melody before, um, I'm going to do my best to sing it for you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. So, and I'll show you the motions too. Why not? So I'm over here singing to you like I have my own album. Yeah. Okay. Ua na ni ke a nue nue la e a la e a si o mai la a iluna la e a la e a That's all it is. That's the melody. I just show you the different um, the motions because there's they did learn hula for this and each of them um, every day was a verse that we learned and. We'll get it. I'll show you that later and how we learned it. So with this verse, it speaks of the rainbow. So what we did was just connecting them from Mele to their Aina and to their self and just bridging those two all together and finding a purpose. What is, why do I need to Malama Aina, right? Because you can tell them clean up, pick up after yourself, but why, what does it have to do? I don't like, okay, so we have to clean up or or that, so I'm gonna do that. And it's just connecting themselves, not only with that, but also with the mele. And I think that's really essential, is bringing that these mele and these practices and values all are in line together, which create who we are and how we live our, our lives as Hawaiian as Kanaka. So the next line, iho mai kaua ho'ola i ka ho'onua. This, this verse, we actually talked about the, the aina system so um, how dirt is grown, I mean, how dirt is grown, hello. How, how you can, um, the, the maintaining your aina, your dirt, water cycle especially is what we really talked about this. Um, we did an activity with that as well. Kupuna uh, mea ulu, this is the third verse. Ho'onani ka'aina. So being able to um, learn how to germinate. I think that's, we, we assume that they're just going to plant the seed and water it, but with the germination process, it's understanding how seeds work and how to do it. And we also did it in an express way. Uh, we did it in a Ziploc bag. I don't know if you guys ever did that in high school or if you did it even with your, your students. Uh, we did it in a napkin Ziploc bag. 
leave it on the counter for a few days. And with this project, we started this on our student orientation, which was on Sunday. And on Thursday, it was already sprouting. So from that whole time that they've learned so much, that was my personal intention was for the seed to kind of show some roots as they did throughout the process of this program. And then from that Thursday, they planted it and then showcased their final projects on Friday for a whole weekend. Um, pa mai kala mohala and maina pua. So when the sun when the sun shines, it kind of like gets the 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 soil all hot. But this was a great opportunity that I felt that we could talk about food waste composting and to enhance your soil, to make it rich. And how can we do it with the soil that we have now? How can we make it better? Or even just the foods that we have in our kitchen to enhance our environment rather than just throwing it away, eating dirt. Like we can just put them all together. And then all of this put together is in hopes for them to be the alaka'i um, for themselves and their ohana. Not so much of, yes, for the future, but for themselves and the important roles that they play. Okay, this is one of my favorite parts. I hope you guys are doing okay out there. I cannot really see anybody. <laughs> it's, it's my screen thing, so um, I'll check into it in a bit. I'm going to go through the program stuff, and then we're going to open up just a little bit, and then we're going to hit into your ha'avina. Maupopo. Oh, right, Mike. Okay, so we did, I did this whole, like, this, this whole um, acronym, right? D-I-Y-K-T. You do it yourself kind things, yeah? And it just makes it more fun when you can just brand it yourself, so why not? So students did a cardboard planter. We did a self-watering planter. And we did a newspaper planter. So these were all things that they could actually get from home, if you can notice. And... Um, they, this is that the engineering part, right, that plays in, into it, and being able to do things yourself as well. So I was really happy and um, proud of them and the things that they did. This is another do-it-yourself. I'm sorry for the ugly picture on the bottom right-hand corner, but um, I just had to throw some realness in there because this is actually one of the students. We I have a video. Um, that I will give you guys access to, that you guys can see on your own time, um, that shows the entire program highlights. So with our program, I figured, why don't it be cool that they would supply their own t-shirt and I just did an iron-on. So this is what it was. We all did it together. We, we selected a shirt, we measured, we did a lot of measuring to assure where and how it's gonna align with our shirt, um, giving them the supplies that they need to iron that on. So I thought, I thought that was really cool. And they really enjoyed it, too, because they never ironed anything on, on their shirts. And what better yet to have a program shirt that you took a part in, an addition you actually made. So I thought that was a really cool addition um, that we had the students to do. OK, so making learning fun. This is one of my favorite things. One of the things is in-class projects. So as you can see that picture right there, we're literally like we're building these things together. I didn't have anything that they had to take home. There was only one thing they had to do. Two things actually. If you believe, two things. The first thing they had to do was actually figure out how are they going to write their paper, their writing assignment. The second thing was, um, in their program books, they had their kilo chart, and they had to be able to kilo where they're going to put their planters in their house. Those are the only two homework things that they did. Um, and being that I had such little students, we were able to, I, would, I was able to work it into the schedule. So I'm like, okay, you guys picked that up very fast, or we took some time on here, so what if we just open up another window for this? You know, you know how the teacher life is, right? Just kind of arranging things. Um, so, but being, doing projects in class, I know that just sounds simple, but being able to see their faces like this, and you're talking, and it's not so much teaching, but this is what we're doing. We're going we're gonna to cut this. Okay, let me see. Let me see. How's your dirt? Right on. There you go. So just simple things like that um, because they should already know how to get to this process. One of the other things that we did add, I did add a special guest to this, was Aloha Authentic, Kamakapili. Mahalo for him for being able to take the time out 
the whole week, right before lunch, um, we had every day was a theme. And thankfully, for those of you who may or may not know him, he is um, he is a part of Aloha Authentic, right? That's his that's his program, and he provides all this insight of um, Hawaiian insight. And so I thankfully he had a lot of videos that I could actually use. So we watched it every day, but they had no idea that he was going to be a part of the our special guest because it's on our schedule. It's on our program schedule, and it's his special guest. But I just left it that way because I wanted to surprise them. So we're watching his videos all week, all related, and we talk about it. Thursday comes on, and I was like, okay, we have our special guest. Now make sure that, you know, we're respectful, you know, kind things, right? Just kind of going over the norms with them. And then he signs on, and they're like, oh, okay, cool. Like, who's this brother? And you can actually see it on the video when you, <laughs> when you, guys, um, when you guys take a look at it. Um, they're like, who's this guy? Oh, Kamaka Pili. And he's like tapping her. He's like, that's him. But it was just exciting to have somebody um, there to kind of enhance the environment. I thought that was kind of kind of cool. But the trick as an instructional side, if you guys ever do something like this, I really suggest that you guys plant the seed throughout the time that you guys are um, doing instruction. So with, what that means is that I didn't have to, I didn't have to provide... Um, a full mo'olelo on him when he came on. And that, because my, I guess personally, my focus was the surprise. That was my focus in, in that moment. The emotional, like, oh, wow, this is cool. Because again, my audience is the students, right? It's not, it's, it's, I have to make sure that my audience is always entertained and, and um, always wanting more from class. So I, I did talk about him in the, in the first two days and we end up talking about certain things, but they saw him a lot because I didn't want to assume that they knew who he was. Um, and one of the last things that's my personal favorite was the daily attire. So if you get a chance to do this, you can have Spirit Week once a week. We did it every day um, because I had a program scheduled to them. And on the top, right below where it says like Po'akahi, Po'alua, right on the bottom of that had a, um, a tire. And every day had an attire. When you see me smiling with that nice customer service smile, like, thank you so much, kind of smile is the um, is career day. So it was Thursday, which is obviously, as you can see, um, the Kamakapili actually did a speech on career day, on career, having his own business, like kind of talked about that. And that's what it was. So I we encourage students to, to do certain things. So for example, Monday, um, Sunday, wait, no, I'm sorry, Monday, we dressed up as our, our favorite musician or celebrity. So mine was Beyonce. I never dressed up in, as Beyonce, okay? Because I know some of you are thinking that. I never do that. But I did wear like a Beyonce shirt. And then as you can see my background, I actually had her, her background from Coachella. Then the next day um, was Mahi Ai. So I had my full like farmer's bandana with my, my Lama Aina shirt. I was in the Lo'i at Kuhia Vaho. So I had that background. Um, and then Wednesday was our elements day because that day we talked about the cycle of um, the rain cycle and everything. And so we, what we did, we, we all dressed up as our favorite element. So I had a green on. I was full in laka mode. I was in palapalai. Um, and then they participated too. But uh, the point also was in this attire was my, was my, um, which is kind of like that icebreaker but that fun activity because we didn't just dress up. We talked about it. Like, why do we choose these? And, oh, that's pretty cool. And we made sure that we gave compliments to each other um, uh, of why we wanted to do, to do that. So that whole, that was just awesome. And then Friday, as you can see, was our, was our um, program shirts. So just something creative. And it also gives them ownership and accountability for, like, okay, what's next for tomorrow? Okay, I know what I'm going to wear, you know? And it just makes it exciting but it's also from our side making sure that they also have these things, right? And not making it so like restricting. Like you gotta wear one polo shirt, you gotta do this for career day. It was just kind of like dress up as your favorite thing. So one of them dressed up as a, um, a, a what you call it, <laughs> a K-pop star. That was one of them. One of them was a, a math science. But I mean that's the beauty about it, right? Just to just to open it up so it's not just like so Hawaiian focused or um, so into that learning monotony, right? 
Okay, last thing. This is one of my favorite things, you guys. We did Papa Hula. So Papa Hula was our super essential piece that we had for, um, <laughs> I'm laughing because I'll show you in a bit. Um, every day around 12.30, yeah, 12.30 to one o'clock, um, classes were all in half an hour increments, just to put, put that out there. So we did half an hour things, whether it's learning projects, learning projects, so on and so forth, up and standing, moving. Um, so this time, this was our Ohana engagement piece. So the Ohana would come in, they would learn hula. It was part of the, it was a, um, I wouldn't say it was a requirement, but of course that's what I'm wanting, right? To make sure that they can come and participate. I didn't put pictures of them participating because I, I wanted to be respectful. Cause you know, you're over there just dancing and giving life, right? And I just never like put anybody on the spot, but like, so that's her and then, you know, everybody going to see the Ohana, right? So anyway, this is from just the last workshop that I did. Um, so with that, it involved them to really connect hula and mele for all the things that they were learning. And that was an essential piece because it was put on by no other than my alter ego, Tutu Anna, Emma, ladies and gentlemen. She was fabulous. She was like one of those tutus that, you know, tell you things and you laugh and then you question, you know, the kind. <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, Tutu, you're so funny. Wait, do I really look like that? You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, that's her. That's her. So Tutu Emma, she is a hula, kumu hula extraordinaire. She's an exceptional musician. She's the lead vocalist of her solo group. You love that. And she was crowned Miss Alo Hula 2020. Again, this is my alter ego. So every day, when, right when the students came back on, I would have them break. So we're going to break and get things together. It was usually after a project. So after we come back from lunch, there was a project that we did, just so they have hands-on stuff. And then right after that, we broke up. And I was like, OK, so clean your mess. <laughs> and then switch off the screen, change my clothes. And Tarara Bumbie, here she was, Tuta Emma in full glory. Um, just to make it exciting. And we would have questions. And again, this is something that you'll also see in the video. It recaps the entire program, including Ho'ike. So um, I hope you can enjoy that. Really fast, before I finish, just this formal part of, formal, yeah, formal part of our program. Um, this is our student registration process. They would actually just sign on um, on the website application. And that's the website was our paoakalinihulaschool.com. And this was the flyer that you see right here that was released out to the public to, um, to attract our students. When the students came on after, and then they made sure they assigned for their, their specific dates because I had more than one. Um, they received the confirmation letter, and in that confirmation letter had everything. You only see one page now, but I had seven, seven pages. This goes from your online norms to um, the expectations to um, what we're what we're doing throughout the week, what is expected, and your and your supplies. So also with the confirmation letter came the starter kit, and this is not the exact starter kit. This is just a picture that I picked up because when I did the starter kit, I never think of you know, taking a picture, right? It's just a solo party over here. So I was just trying to like make sure everything, I was packing everything that I could um, to assure everybody's um, kits were set before I shipped them or shipped them or delivered them um, to the students. And in that, they also received a handbook. So this is the handbook in, in its flesh and glory. Um, I had an index in here. And then again, just some of the, the essential things we had the norms I had then sign here for their, for their student agreements, um, some Hawaiian language things. We also did every day, I had a schedule, um, the theme, what to wear, what we're gonna do, what time things are and what's gonna happen. Um, and then, oh, you guys like see this. So we're doing a t-shirt day, right? This is our ho'ike. And I wanted to make sure that they was wearing their t-shirt. You gotta put, you know, You love it. Just gotta make it exciting, yeah? Small kind of cut and wearing the gear kind of action. 
And then we also have the um, our kilo chart. Our kilo chart was really important because it allowed them to, again, like I was telling you folks earlier, to observe the areas that they're going to host the planters in. And I, I feel like um, if we're going to teach them how to plant or malama aina, we got to we got to try our best to uh, to give them the full sight of everything. So you can plant it, but some plants may not need full sun. Um, and even if you do put full sun, where is the full sun in your house? Are you and are you going to plant it in your house? Are you going to keep it a house plant? Are you going to put it outside? Where is the wind at? Like so, these are all the wonderful things that we had, and it was great for the students to have this so they can they can actually write stuff and we would go over it, show they would take pictures, send it to me, um, kind of what I guess everybody's doing now, right? But this is kind of right where COVID hit. So at the last state of everything. Students receive a certificate of completion at the end of the week. Now, I know it makes it look legit and make it look like, ooh, wow, I have one. And in my, it, in my case, I was also, uh, maybe there's just my little, my little head voice, because, you know, we all get the little bad ones right in there. And I was like, who do you think you were trying to do a certificate of completion? But as a student, it is great to receive something. You know, even if it's a, uh, um, a certificate like this from a program that's just super brand new and people are going to see it, principals or whatever committees are going to look at it and be like, this is pretty cool. Even if they don't know where this, this um, with where a program is at, they they're think it's pretty cool. So this is awesome. It also gives them something to, to have. So they're just like completing it and be like, okay, bye. Thank you so much. But to have like, I have a certificate that I completed it. And to start learning how to build their um, portfolio as future future leaders. Because um, who knows, maybe they'll carry this throughout high school and be like, I completed this summer course for our program. And I can't, um, and these are other things that I have that I started to create a folder for. So. We prepare the space and we plant it up things that we already had. What was that? Sorry, was that was that question for me? No, we're good. Oh, okay. Keep on going. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the so the last thing I know you guys are probably wondering, how did you guys do Hoike? And now, I mean, really, all of this was a virtual program, right? I never saw the kids once. We just logged in every day, and then we left. And um, so, how our Hoike was, we did it just the basic template. But I wanted to make sure that we provided the whole EK was actually open to a lot of people. I didn't. One of the recommendations from our viewers was to see if we could post it on um, social media, um, like Facebook Live, and stream it that way. Um, I think eventually I would do that. This, I, the first one, I just wanted to kind of do it with just a group of people, and it was interesting because I will say this: for the little students that I had, we had almost 50 people that were tuning in in our whole EK. And um, I was very thankful for that. And it was I was really excited for the students, actually, because um, you know sometimes students are like, oh, I'm just going to do them in front of my mom or my parents or my uncle. But then when they see the numbers on the side, they're, they were like, this is, this is realness. This is realness, Kubo. But um, this was the template of it. I just made sure that we did a little mele, Hawaii ponoi. I know you guys are like, oh my gosh, did you guys sing all that? I trained my students in the beginning to assure that they're singing. However, everybody's mics were off. And I wanted to make sure that the two qualifications was to make sure that their mic was off and on when appropriate, being appro um, at appropriate time, and to assure that they're actually participating. So even if we're off sync, your mouth is moving. And I told them, I was like, I'm over here playing. I was like, I can see you guys now, so make sure. <laughs> so they were singing. They did a great job. They were singing. Um, um, so that's a trick, right? I'm sure that we've all learned within the past few months is to make sure that we mute it. So we're all, whether the lead person is playing ukulele or singing, everybody else can follow in their own time that they're receiving it. Um, the students at introductions. So we, obviously we switched our um, controls of our mic. Students were, um, after we did the program interview, like every, overview like I did with you guys in the beginning, I was like, so this is kind of what the curriculum that we did, but let's show you the hula. 
So I pre-recorded the hula and I combined it together because the concept was I wanted to have students throughout the, um, the week, per se, that did it, and I made a video of, of all that happening. In this case, they were luckily, they were, all, they were together, and it, I just incorporated Tutu Emma and a little bit about me, Kumu, playing ukulele, just to have that nice video of everybody doing it at the same time. Um, I found that helpful because if we had to do it live, again, there was this whole timing issue, and I didn't want nobody stressing out, mainly me. I just didn't want to do that. Then students did their presentations. They showed everything that they, they did throughout the week. Um, and we also did a program highlights um, of what they, other things that you, that you guys have access to. Now, one of the big things that I did for this, um, I, provided, I provided this two documents that you see, the one before and this one. It was um, provided in a folder. And I know it looks kind of weird, but it's actually meant to be that kind of a, 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 a fold, like an insert. So if parents or, or audience wanted to print it out, they could, so they could follow along. So I just had that template ready for them. Um, but that's, that's what it was. And I had a separate folder for everything. So just in case any kind of um, glitches or communications didn't go through, they could just refer. What, what did he say? What was the video? Oh, I missed it. OK, just pull it up look at it, review it, or look it up on their own time. So it wasn't so like, I lost everything, I had bad connection, and I'm just sad, you know? So that was one of the things. And I think, oh, two things, and then I'll just stop. So we had student assessments. We didn't, I had seven questions for them. I didn't post them all. This is just an example. So this is the beginning of it. Their pre was, do they know anything about germination? One was zero in this scale. One was not very much. Five was I know plenty. As you can see, the post was was they grew, so they knew something about it, and I was very I was very happy that they learned a lot of it. And so they, they showed um, that with the pre. It was the same questions that I had. The only thing that was different was added was just um, a little manao box, which is where what would I want to do? What are other topics I would like to learn and things like that. And of course, we had a parent. You guys can, if you want to, I'm just going to give you a quick little moment. You can take a picture of it and read it, but I'm not going to read it to you. But this was just one of the parent surveys that she said that she really would, she really liked it. It was really engaging for their her their students, allow them to be really involved in what they're doing and show them accountable for for all the the, the lessons and projects that they had going on. And they would totally have their cakey come again. Okay, so now it's Ha'avina time, but I'm gonna wait. You like him, he's so cute. Makes me smile. Okay, where are we at? Ooh, purr. Okay, so is everybody all right? If you guys have any questions, like we, I mean, I'm gonna, yeah. I can answer some right now, and then I'm gonna slip right into the Ha'avina. Because, you know, I don't wanna just talk about exciting students and all the kind things that I'm not exciting you guys. So we're going to do this together. Marie, how are we doing? We're doing great, Kalani. Just so you know, we don't have any co uh, questions at the moment in the chat okay. box, but you're getting a lot of, of... So make oh, sure you go and check it out after when you get a chance, OK? OK, absolutely. positive Lolubi. Okay, I guess right. Can I go back sharing my screen then? Okay. Now, Hamana, are you ready to have the time of your life? Okay, let me share. Let me share. Let me share. Let me share. Okay, so what's going to happen? I'm going to need you guys to participate in this, okay? Because I know you guys sitting at home. It's Ha'avina time, darlings. So I need you guys to participate at home. Although I cannot see you, because I know that you're all adults, so I'm going to trust that you're doing it. Okay? So we're going to do Ha'avina time. I want to share with you, we are going to do a song, Palisa. So yes, we're dancing. We're not going to stand up, though. We're going to do really, really simple. We're going to do express kind stuff because we don't have much time left, and I want to make sure we get to the actual activity. But I just wanted to take you to a small little journey. Okay? So we're going to talk about Palisa or Paris, and you're like, I don't, like, what's the relevance? 
Um, so, Palisa, okay, wait, let me, let me, I'm sorry. Let me, um, let me provide you with some, oh, I did. Oh, I'm so smart sometimes. Okay, so the melee that we're gonna talk about is Palisa. It's actually called Palisa. And it's a, um, it's a, it's a wonderful melee. It is not the, the, what is his name? It's not Kuana's version. His version was created by him. But there was one earlier, um, I think in about the 1915, like that's how long ago it was. And it's a, it's a wonderful song. We'll get into the Manao in a bit. Okay? So, I don't know if you've ever heard this song before. Palisa akuneia u ikalele paluna o niu niu. I'm in Paris, flying dizzy in a balloon. I love it. And I would tell you the manao. I should have switched it, but sorry, I just added it, you know, like the kind 20 minutes before this presentation. So. <laughs> I, I should have switched it, but it's okay. We'll just wing it, okay? So I'm going to do it now because, you know, I want to talk about it already because I'm sure you guys are already like, let's, let's, what? I like this song. So the Mele Manao, this is, so Palisa was originally composed as Parisa with an R and was originally sung faster. It was a faster tempo that we actually know it. Um, that we know it today because it's more slow and um, um, sweet. Um, Auntie Patna Makabekan asks, um, said that she learned this um, Parisa from Kapua, Kiahiluahine's cousin in the 1930s. Now here's the thing. Parisa was composed by a boy, a young man, who was a patient at Kalau Papa. He was shown a film one evening that was projected onto a bed sheet that was, that was hung. The film was a film about places or a travel, a travelogue of some kind. After seeing the film, he was, he was moved to compose his song in hopes of traveling to these places one day. It's not great, that kind of made me teary, but it's so beautiful how our people, although we, some of us may be descendants or not, that's still, that's still people like Kanaka, Kanaka Hawaii that, that lived here, that had stories and experiences and decided to share it with us. Um, this is one of them. If you guys are familiar with this song, it is beautiful. I suggest you go look it up. Um, you'll see a lot more of Kuana stuff because this is an older song, but um, Kealoha Kalama has a beautiful version of it. Um, that plays this song, and it is it is a wonderful song. And actually, every verse speaks about going to India and what's in India, the camels, going to um, of various places around the world, and what you're doing there. And it's such a it gives me chicken skin to think about it. Okay, so let's do this, Palisa. So let's try the motions. Are you guys ready? Okay, clear your area, push back your deck, push back your chair if you need to. I'm watching you now. Push back, yes, push back your desk. Make sure everything is clear. Make sure you can do motions, let at ya. So make sure you can see yourselves. Okay, so we're gonna start off in your 45, your arms. If you can see my arms, they're gonna be in your 45. 45s are a count. It's also a part of angles. Insert math here. Okay, so 45, if you're dancers, you guys know where your 45 um, angles are. So they're in the corners. So you're gonna bring it up this way. I don't think. Hopefully, you guys can see my hand. I'm gonna push you guys back a little bit more. Um, can you guys, Maria? Can you see my hands? Um, bring them in just a little bit more. Can you see them now? Yes. Okay. Anyway, they're like this, but they're in your 45. Okay. So you're gonna do it this way, and you're gonna scan your hands this way, and you're gonna make it look just like that image right over there. So what you're doing, you're scanning your arms like this, and you're making it like a hale. But you see this part right here where your wrist is? I want it to be above your head. So it's gonna look, hopefully you guys can see it. I kinda see nothing, I just see the Paris right now. But it should look like this. I want you to look like this, yeah? And lift that chin, yeah? 
Get rid of that double, bring it into a single. Yes, room right here. Okay, so palisa. Palisa. Here. Yes. Palisa. Then you're gonna bring your hands into your chest and bring it out. So you're gonna bring it in. Bring it out. You can do it to your right. If I am opposite from you, just do it from your right. We'll just save the, we're just doing this as a part of our activity, okay? So don't be like, so what's the hangles are? Is my face, what are my eyes doing? It's all right, it's all right. You'll be fine, okay? So palisa, palisa. Bring it in. Akune, bring it out. Ah, ooh, and you're gonna bring it in. Kalani, may I request yes. that you um, stop sharing your um, PowerPoint so that they can see you full screen? That is a wonderful request. Thank you so much for saying that. Because now Mahalo. I can see this now. <laughs> oh, there you go. Mahalo. I mean, you know. Okay, yes. Let me lift this up a little bit so you can see. Okay, are you guys ready now? You guys can see, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. In the 45 here, okay, so my hands are flat and they're going to go up like this and you're going to do like a, like a little hale and again, you're going to make sure it's above your head, yeah, so in full extension, this is how I'm going to look. Face and all, okay, ready, and palisa akune I'm in Paris. Why? Because I went there. Okay? Um, ikalele. This one's really slow. This is not a hula noho, by the way. This is not a hula noho, but we're doing it because, you know, we're sitting down. So we know ing right now. So your hands are going to go like this. I'm going to put it down just a little bit. You're just going to do it like this. And all you're doing is creating a round circle and you're going to end up back here. Yeah, we're gonna do like a big circle, okay? So you're gonna go one, two, three, four, with your palms facing down, yeah? And you're gonna make sure that you're looking up. And then from here, I want you to turn like this. Just once, that's all, and keep it up, okay? Let's try, express, ready, palisa, and palisa. Yes. Okay, hopefully that was magical. We'll do one last time and we pow. Okay? Ready, Palisa and Palisa Akuneya U Ikalele Paluna Oniu Niu Wasn't that beautiful? How are you guys doing out there? How much time we have, Marie? Time check, like we minutes. have about five minutes. Okay, so I'm just gonna overview. I wanted to do, um, I'm just gonna, okay, I'm gonna share my screen one more time. I'm gonna do it real, real fast and close this up because I know you guys are ready to dash a lunny. Okay. So as we went over this, I was actually gonna do a scavenger hunt with you guys. So the point of this hula was to actually talk about, um, okay, so this is something that you guys can do with your students, have a scavenger hunt, right? So you're going to do play music. It's going to be 60, 30, I mean, you know, two minutes long, however you're going to have them do. Search for these things, break, and then come back, and then participate in it. So our activity that I was um, hoping to get to, but, you know, I talk too much, but that's what I guess when you live by yourself, huh? Nobody, nobody else will talk to. <laughs> but... I wanted to take you on this scavenger hunt and we were gonna talk about matter and we were gonna embrace science. So the point of this was to try to identify 
anything, like what is matter? Anything that has mass and takes up space. Then here are the types of matters. The first one that we're going to be working on is the gas. And our question would be, does air take up space? And after doing our bubble experiment, which is what we're going to be doing, bubble, get it? Bubble experience, our question would be, yes, air does take up space. And that is pretty much, I mean, that's pretty much it. So that's the upcoming things that I have going on for right now. Um, I can, sorry, I'm trying to multitask here. I'm going to maybe, I don't even know if I have the authority to do that, but I'm just going to, oh, okay, I do. I just put in the link right there. So in the link right there, if you want to click on it now to open up Windows, because I don't know how long this is going to um, last on here, but to have this and our whole Ho'oliki website, what's on it, um, the link to our whole and document. So this is where the video is. I really suggest you guys go see the videos because it's actually funny. <laughs> there's some funny stuff in there, but also some projects. Um, and there's also an exit path. So please share to me what you've learned um, or just kind of, it's really, it's like three questions, two questions actually. So that is pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was entertaining. Oh. Okay. Aloha and mahalo, Kalani.